today we're standing in the map room, which is located on the ground floor, just opposite the elevator up to the president's private quarters. This room was used in the early 20th century as a, a billiard room in the Wilson administration. By the time the Roosevelts were here uh, in the 1930s, it was called the Trophy Room. It was a place where gifts were received and set around on bookshelves and tabletops. Right after the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, planning went into way to give the president a situation room, a room that was then called the Map Room, a place where he could consult secret documents and communiques from the fronts. This room was selected because it was very close to that elevator and allowed the president to come down in his wheelchair, roll across the hall, and come into this private space. It, in fact, was reserved for the president and a select group of military officers who staffed the room. It was not open to the Secret Service. They had to stay outside and protect the president from outside the door, but it was not open to just anybody to come in. One of his regular visitors, however, was Winston Churchill, who came to the White House shortly after Pearl Harbor Day. I was here at Christmas time in 1941. Had a room in his war bunker where he had a series of maps that was used for the same purpose, just to study the course of the war. In this particular room, the desks were placed in the center of the room so that maps could be put on artificial walls around the outside of the room to which maps could easily be attached. And the president could then roll his wheelchair between the desks and the maps to study the theaters of the war. This particular room now has two items that are associated with the map room. There is a map. It was produced in this room right at the end of the Roosevelt administration. So he had gone to a Warm Springs, Georgia, to the Little White House and had a stroke and passed away there. And this map was being produced. It was the last German positions as of April, May of 1945. It in fact is simply a National Geographic map of Europe with a plastic overlay. And then they taped on shapes around spaces that were still occupied by the German forces and those that had to a large extent been bypassed by both the United States, British and Russian troops advancing across Europe. Below that map is a wonderful watercolor that was drawn by one of the White House calligraphers, William Gemmel, to the recollections of George Elsie, who was a naval officer in this room during the war, where he described how the desks were positioned, what the maps looked like, what the president would look like in his wheelchair, what the telephone looked like. After it's being used as the map room, this room has had other uses in the more recent times. In fact, it was the original curator's office when Mrs. Kennedy created my position. In the Johnson administration, it was used uh, partly by the doctor's office next door and partly by the Secret Service. But then in 1970, it became a, a more formal but private drawing room here in the house. It was furnished in the Chippendale style to represent the late 18th century styles that George Washington and John Adams would have known in their houses in New York and Philadelphia. And it includes some maps on the wall, uh, one that was surveyed by Thomas Jefferson's father, of Maryland and Virginia, and others of the city of Washington, which includes some images of the White House. But it retains its name, the Map Room, because of that moment in time when, during World War II, it was part of the most vital and central planning of the, the war effort on behalf of President Roosevelt living here in the house.